everybody, I'm Abby with This Week Community News, and we are at Camp Mary Orton, and I'm here with the Ohio School of Falconry, uh, specifically Joe. How are Hi. you, Joe? Good, thank Good. you. Good. So, Joe, what is your official title with the Ohio School of Falconry? Um, let's see. Gosh, it, it varies because I do so much different things, so many different things. Um, I am, I guess I could call myself, since I own the company, uh, the Executive Director and Grand Poopa. There you go. Uh, last week I was the omnipotent and all-powerful god of uh, falconry. <laughs> And who knows what next week brings. Probably uh, later this afternoon we'll be scraping poop and other things. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Part so, of the job. It's, it's, and the job is, is varied <laughs> every day. So tell us a little bit about the School of Falconry and what falconry even means. Sure. So um, the sport of falconry is the oldest sport in the world. Okay. Um, it, you know, there's a varying thoughts about how old it is. Some people say as, uh, you know, as, as young as 4,000. Some people say as old as 10,000 years old. Wow. Okay. So um, it started actually in the Far East. A lot of people think that it started in, in Europe, but actually uh, it started in probably Japan or China. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Well, the earliest that we have is a rendering of a tapestry that shows a Japanese falconer hunting with a Japanese goshawk. Okay. And that's, um, you know, the dating there is roughly five or 6,000 years old, wow. potentially a little older, so. And again, when you say falconry, does that mean liking birds, hunting with birds, yeah. what does that mean? So um, a lot of people kind of romanticize it as just being something where you walk around with a bird. But <laughs> yeah. uh, the sport of falconry is actually a hunting sport. Okay. And, um, you know, it's interesting, we call it a sport, the world's oldest sport, but really um, for most of its history it was a way to get food for the table so oh. it was a subsistence uh, a form of hunting okay. um, and I say it really became a sport when you no longer needed to do it okay. and so that was around the time that uh, gunpowder came into play gotcha yeah and All so right. it was largely kept alive in Western civilization as a result of the uh, the kings and queens so the idea that we have in terms of you know, uh, the royal court going out for a day of hawking. Yeah. Uh, that was largely, uh, in Western society, it was still kept alive in the Middle East and the Far East uh, in different ways. Wow. So it is a hunting sport at its nature. And even today here in the United States, it's, uh, it's the most heavily regulated field sport, but it is entirely about hunting. Okay, and specifically, how do you use the birds to hunt? Sure. And what are you hunting for? So uh, it kind of depends on what state you're in, okay. um, you know, uh, because we have such varied ecosystems. So here in the east, largely what falconers are, are chasing, especially in Ohio, uh, would be squirrels, rabbits, okay. uh, sometimes ducks, uh, sometimes pheasant. Oh. Uh, but mainly the mainstays are rabbits and squirrels. Okay. And then the... Uh the birds, what, what all do they do in the hunting aspect sure. of it? So, uh, you know, there's no more unique relationship in nature than uh, a falconer and their bird. Okay. So uh, there's a partnership based on trust in which we kind of bring two species. In some cases, you know, bring in three species because you're working with the dog as well. And the, the purpose is to flush game, which the bird will catch. Okay. So the bird is, is trained to work with you and to look to you. Uh, for assistance in catching something that you will then allow it to uh, to feed up on. Wow. Okay. And then I keep saying birds just because I'm not sure, sure. exactly what what um, are they hawks? Are they sure. you know, what kind of breeds of birds are they? Sure. So uh, the different species that we use. Um, you know, when we talk about the term falconry, there used to be another term, and uh, it was called ostringing. Okay. So an ostringer was somebody who actually would fly hawks. Okay. Um, and falconers were people who flew falcons. Today, kind of collectively, the term falconry refers to whether you fly hawks, uh, falcons, eagles, or in some cases people are even flying owls now. Oh wow. So yeah. Okay. I never thought of those as being for hunting. And so. and they they require a special kind of hand and a special mindset to work with, hmm. uh, because they are um, how do I say it politely? They are a very uh, simplistic uh, mindset in how they view the world, being a nocturnal hunter. So. Okay. And then so for the Ohio School of Falcon, do you offer classes for people to take? Absolutely. To learn the basics of it. Sure. Uh, what. What is the average person looking like when they come to this uh, sure. program? So the, the first thing is, is a lot of people think that what we're offering is programs to help you become a falconer. Yeah. And, and that's not necessarily the case. The, the reason we're called a school of falconry is largely because um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife permit that we have, uh, which allows us to let people get hands on with birds of prey, 
uh, which is highly illegal. If you're not a falconer or a raptor rehabilitator or a raptor educator, it's illegal for uh, the general public just to work with a bird of prey. Okay. So uh, this fish and wildlife permit, which is called a falconry school permit, allows us to be able to offer these programs to the public. Okay. So we do, um, we are the, actually the first uh, falconry school here in the Midwest. Um, we were only the sixth school of falconry in the United States. Wow. And so what we do is people come in and we teach them a little bit about the history of the sport. And then we um, kind of get them up close and personal with birds and we teach them actual skills in relationship to how you would handle a bird. Okay. And then we give them the opportunity to fly the bird. And so, uh, you know, we have two programs. We have the Introduction to Falconry, which um, we use a simulation, which is used nowhere else in the world. It's a simulation where we pretend you're an apprentice and we take you through the steps of what it would be like to train your first bird. Wow. And so for the introduction program, we're teaching you how you would train the bird and fly it on a long leash or a crayon line. Okay. Uh, and then the Walk with Hawk program is basically uh, covering everything in the intro. Plus, we then take the birds off the hook which is a falconry turf, take the bird off the hook, throw it up into a tree, and, and go for a 30, 40 minute walk here at uh, uh, Camp Mary Orton where the bird is shooting from 70 feet down out of the canopy down to land on your glove, and then you're casting it back up wow. into the tree, so yeah. Okay. Well, and you already kind of mentioned this, but let's let's meet some of the birds. Sure, that you sure, have sure, here. sure. So, oh, by the way, first of all, yeah. I want to let you know I got you a little gift. Okay. And I wanted to make sure that you know people didn't think that we were pandering to the media, <laughs> you know. Because, <laughs> but anyways, so I got you this Ohio School of Falconry hat. Thank you. Yes, because once again, I don't want to make it seem like I'm looking for any special <laughs> favor that I'm currying. <laughs> But um, I, by the way, I love your hair, oh, thank and you. that's a lovely top. So, <laughs> anyways, you. all right. So uh, let's go over and meet some of our birds. Okay. So uh, we brought a couple of different birds today. Okay. Um, so uh, we brought uh, an owl. We also brought a falcon, and we brought um, a Harris hawk, which we're going to be flying today. Okay. Um, so we'll start off with our owl, all and right. his name is Henson. He's a Eurasian eagle owl. Okay. Um, and the first thing we need to do is you are woefully inadequate in terms of what's on your hand okay. there. So um, what we'd have, you, you can come on in a little closer. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, <laughs> come on, a little closer. So what we're gonna do is show you some of the equipment that we use in the sport of falconry. Okay. Um, so obviously gloves are to protect your hand. Sure. Uh, hoods, which are one of the iconic pieces used in falconry, are used to, uh, to calm the bird. Okay. Uh, this, that's something that when you take away a bird's uh, ability to see, all the potential threats, they relax and calm down quite a bit. Okay. Um, we also have a, a number of different types of lures that are used in the sport. Lures are used to uh, uh, kind of as an insurance policy. Uh, you know, let's say the bird gets startled or is uh, chased by something that might be after it, you know, trying to catch it and eat it. Sure. Uh, or if it's in an area where it's flown around uh, power lines and you want to get it back uh, and you have to have that recall. Uh, it, the birds are trained to come to the lure okay. uh, with a big piece of food on it. So wow. uh, this right. is a, a lure that's used for, for hawks, and this is the type of lure that's used for falcons. Okay, wow. um, and then last but not least, every bird will actually wear uh, this kind of a setup. They'll have oh. anklets on. Um, uh, hawks will carry bells on them. We don't put those on owls or falcons. Okay. Uh, these are called jesses, which are leather straps. Uh, sometimes they're braided nylon. Uh, that go through the anklets. There's always a swivel of some sort and then the leash. Okay. And so this is the basic equipment that you'll see uh, when we uh, start to pull birds out. So let me see your hand. Uh, it's always your left hand. Okay. Uh, the reason Even for that if I'm is left handed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the idea is is that uh, back in the Renaissance, back in medieval ages, when you were riding a horse and going out to go hawking, you'd be controlling oh. the horse with your right hand okay. and you'd always have the bird on your left. Wow. Okay. All right. So I need you to hold up your left hand so okay. I can see how big your hand is. Yeah. Oh my god, look at the size of that <laughs> mitt. Can you get that? That is huge. <laughs> my god. Whew. Okay, so we're probably gonna use this. Okay. Go ahead and slide your hand down into that glove just like that. Make right. a fist. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay, come on over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the first bird out. Now, okay. what makes our programs a little bit different than most of the other programs is um, we teach actual skills. So as we go through the, the process of uh, kind of step-by-step -step what you're learning, uh, we're trying to help you understand the sport in a little deeper way. So okay. we're actually teaching uh, actual skills that you would use as a falconer. Okay. I call it the five skills of the falconer. I kind of made that up, but the idea is is the five basic skills you would need to train a bird. Okay. So the first one we're going to teach you is how do you hold a bird. Okay. So take your right hand and put it down by your side. Okay. Or I'm sorry, your left hand. My put left it down hand. by your side. Okay, got it. Make a fist. Okay. okay. And now what I need you to do is channel that innermost cranky old man who hates the neighborhood kids playing on your lawn. Uh -huh. Right. What do they do? 
get exactly. Off my so get off my Sorry. lawn. So go like this, and then take this elbow and go right down into your ribs. Like and that. I'll make, yep. And okay. I'm going to make a little adjustment like this. Okay. And just move it just like this. This gives you the perfect 45 degree angle to hold and support a bird. Okay. Now what you'll notice is once we get a bird on your glove, the first thing you'll probably say is. Oh my God, this isn't as heavy as I thought it was. Okay. But within a minute, that arm is going to start to go down. All right. And you'll notice the birds start to look around for a higher perch because a higher perch is safety. And okay. so that bird um, is going to be looking to actually, you know, try to get someplace higher. Okay. I'm not worried that it's going to go to your shoulder or your brand new, really cool Ohio School of Falconry <laughs> hat. I'm, I'm worried that it would actually, if you dropped, oh. your, no, dropped your glove, that right foot would go above the cuff. Oh, okay. um, birds of prey have anywhere from 100 to 1,000 pounds of crushing pressure per square inch, okay. and I don't want one of, the, one of those feet to go up. Okay, so okay. they'll be landing on they'll, my... They'll be sitting this, here. Well, we're, we're going to teach you how to hold the bird okay. first. Okay. And so we're going to get you up close and personal with the Eurasian eagle owl. Okay. Now, this bird's name is Henson. He was one of the first uh, eagle owls here in the state of Ohio. He actually was uh, uh, raised by uh, two women. One was a former apprentice of mine, Amy Mahalik, uh, who is now out west uh, doing great things in bird abatement and uh, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, she actually spent uh, last summer, uh, or summer before last, down in Puerto Rico trying to save the uh, Puerto Rican shark shins. So she did a lot of work with Henson here. Oh, wow. And uh, then my daughter did a lot of work with him. So he actually lived in my daughter's uh, uh, backyard, or not backyard, uh, in her bedroom. Oh my gosh. So, now this is Eurasian eagle owl. This is the world's largest species of owl okay. uh, uh, when it comes to weight. And so uh, this bird traditionally will be anywhere from, the males will be four to six pounds, the females can get as large as 10 pounds. Okay. Uh, girls are always bigger than boys in the ro world of raptors. Okay. Uh, so I say the girls are large and in charge. <laughs> so let's step over here. So we got a little space. Now what I'm gonna do is you stay here and I'm gonna shift over here. Okay. And the first skill that we're gonna teach you is what I call the reverse transfer. Okay. When you get a bird in from the wild that you're training and working with, yeah. uh, you basically have to learn how to back it up onto a perch. Okay. And so this is what we call a reverse transfer. We're going to pretend that your glove is a perch, so keep your elbow in, okay. just like that. And what we're doing is we're going to back the bird up on, and when you put pressure on the back of the leg, the bird steps back and okay. up. Now open your glove like this, uh -huh, and we're just going to come straight through here, okay. make a fist, and then we're going to roll your glove up. Now watch what he does. See how he automatically oh, steps to that higher perch. Yeah. Okay, open your glove again, and I'm just gonna pull these down, and then okay. you just tighten it right there. Okay. So um, you'll notice that he seems pretty relaxed. Now his horns just went up, which uh, Eurasian eagle owls, when those horns go up, it's a way of communicating. Basically, okay. he's looking around, trying to figure out what's going on here, if you will. If you notice his horns, every single bird will molt every single year. Uh -huh. So his horns, hey buddy, can you turn this way a little bit? His <laughs> horns, one horn over here is a little bit, is a little bit uh, longer than the other. Uh -huh. uh, that's because he's molted out some of his left horn and he's waiting to grow in the new one. So wow. I kind of, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, it, uh, it looks like he's got, you know, heavy eyebrows, one of them shaved, yeah. if you will. <laughs> So um, when you look at his feet, you'll notice that he has feathers all the way down to his toes. Yeah. Um, there's two different uh, groupings of owls. There's the barn owls, which are the most um, uh, the most successful owls. They can be found on every single continent. Okay. Um, and then there's the typical owls, which is pretty much everything else. The typical owls basically have feathers farther down uh, their legs than the barn owls do. And um, you'll also notice that while all owls have a, a facial disc, uh, the typical owls, it's a lot harder to see. With barn owls, you can actually see it much more clearly. Okay. So, now, that was a reverse transfer. This is called a forward transfer. All right. So, when you're picking a bird up off of a perch, yeah. you basically, if you're holding the bird like this, which, interestingly enough, a lot of um, uh, modern English came from ancient falconry thanks to Shakespeare. Hmm. So, when you're holding a bird, you actually have the leash or jesses under my thumb. Okay. So under your thumb and then also wrapped around your little finger. Okay. So there's all sorts of terms like walk the line, showing your hand, off the hook, uh, hoodwinked, old codger, old hag, Sounds like a chaperone. Yeah, that's, it's a whole program in itself. So what we're going to do is have you open your hand like that. Uh, okay. Okay. And then all you're going to do is just lower your glove down and he's going to step right up. Just like oh, that. Oh, wow. So um, we utilize the natural behaviors of these birds. So you can't use negative reinforcement with any bird of prey. Okay. So we're constantly working with them to use positive reinforcement sure. to utilize their natural instincts and their natural behaviors to partner with in terms of us hunting what we're trying to achieve, wow. what we're trying to catch. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put him away. Sure. We're going to pull another bird out. All right. And this next bird is our newest member. Okay. Nice move. You didn't smash into anything. 
<laughs> owls can sometimes be a little clumsy, so oh. people always ask if uh, our birds like their boxes, and you kind of saw that. The birds like to get in there because it's calm, it's quiet, it's mm. kind of like my teenage son when he comes home from, uh, now he's at college, but when he would come home from, uh, from school, he basically just wanted to get away and have some alone time, so sure. he'd go down into his room and shut the door. <laughs> so. So the next bird we're gonna pull out is a Jersaker Falcon. Okay. Now this is a bird, uh, she's new to us. She actually uh, came from California. She was a big bird abatement bird. Okay. Uh, bird abatement is uh, an industry where you utilize uh, trained raptors to chase nuisance birds away from airplane or oh. airports, uh, landfills, golf courses. Um, a big one is now also uh, vineyards and oh. uh, orchards. So the wow. agricultural industry is huge. Okay. So he was a big bird abatement bird. He was chasing seagulls away from the, uh, the um, beaches out in California. And uh, his claim to fame was he took third place in the California Lure Flying Championships a couple years ago. Wow, so, right. uh, she actually is a beautiful bird. Um, she is a little persnickety. She's um, a jeer saker, um, which she's seven eighths jeer. So she's almost a pure jeer. Looks a lot like it. But hybridization when you're breeding birds uh, gives you the benefit of getting hopefully the, the positives of each bird. Okay. This is a bird that also will be wearing a hood so you'll be able to get, get a chance to kind of see how um, the hood works with the bird. Her to step up. We're starting to incorporate her more in our classes. Plus, we actually just uh, procured one of two uh, bird abatement permits for the state of Ohio. So oh, we're wow. actually able, able to utilize uh, these birds in um, helping organizations, facilities here in Ohio to uh, rid themselves of in nuisance birds. Wow, so right. uh, you'll see the hood actually keeps the bird from seeing anything. Yeah. Uh, and so the way you actually take it off is you release the, the braces uh -huh. and then you use the top knot to pull the hood off the bird. And you said the hood is really for calming? It just calms okay. it. It's the same as using a box. Okay. It's just with, uh, with falcons you can kind of uh, utilize the hood. Some birds actually you know, uh, prefer the boxes to the hoods. Okay. So uh, the reason we actually travel we use the hood and the box is because sometimes when we're traveling, if we just have a bird on the perch in the back of the car, sometimes it attracts unwanted attention. People, you know, try to get in and, and uh, steal your bird. <laughs> so anyways, so, uh, so she's a, a big bird. She, um, Falcons comes in, in all shapes and sizes. Our smallest falcon here in the United States uh, is the kestrel. Okay. Uh, it's the size of a robin. And uh, that's one of the birds that in many states falconry apprentices start with. Wow, all so right. So if people are looking to become falconers here in the state of Ohio, we actually have, uh, that's called a rouse. Don't get too nervous. Uh, if she wanted to eat you, she'd probably chase you down. But by the way, how tall are you? Uh, like 5'3". Oh my God, that's the perfect height for our rabbit costume. <laughs> yeah, we have a game we play called How Fast Can You Run? So uh, we'll get the flip-flops on yeah, we'll and the uh, flopsy-mopsy uh, outfit for you. So, um, so when you look at this bird, uh, you know, you say, oh, I'd love to be a falconer, have a bird like this. Well. Um, you know, here in the United States, you have to go through a two-year apprenticeship. Okay. And so we're lucky that we have a great organization here in Ohio called the Ohio Falconry Association. Okay. It's our professional association, and they actually have an apprentice director who is responsible for, um, you know, helping uh, folks who want to pursue the sport uh, to pursue it. Okay. And so they actually have their uh, state picnic coming up on, um, I believe it is Sunday. Oh, wow. Um, so we can actually uh, give you some of that information sure. uh, yeah. that you can put uh, uh, in with as a link to, um, yeah. to this posting. That sounds great. So uh, it's a way to get out and meet people in your area and, um, you know, uh, uh, there'll be some cool birds there and uh, get a chance to kind of uh, meet and greet some of the other people that might be able to help, uh, help you pursue the sport. So this is not a starter bird, though. You were saying no. this is a bigger bird. No. Well, well, it's not just you start with a small bird. You can start with a red-tailed hawk. So, oh, okay. In fact, most apprentices will start with a red-tailed hawk. We, okay. I was actually the first apprentice director for the state of Ohio back in 2010. So, oh, wow. Yeah, we actually developed the position uh, for the state club and developed all the curriculum. They have a great uh, apprentice director now who is, his name is Jeff Melsop, uh, who has been responsible for kind of... Uh, uh, ushering a whole new generation of falconers into the sport wow, here in Ohio. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to hood her. Okay. And then we'll pull out the bird that we're going to be flying and okay. we'll get some opportunities for you to, to put that glove to use. Sure, sounds great. So you always start when you're hooding a bird, it, it's, it's really slow and consistent. So as you come up, the idea is, is that you're opening up and then, well, and she's kind of distracted by all the volunteers over there. Yeah. And you just pop it up over top. So you're not startling her. Nope, yeah. and you set it, and you look, give her a second to kind of relax, and then this is called striking the braces. 
It just goes on oh, like wow. that. Yeah. It's all pretty simple and easy. And so I'm going to go ahead and put her away, and then we'll pull out Sedosa. Okay. Now, Sedosa, the next bird, is a female Harris's hawk. And uh, Harris's hawks are the most, how do I say it, uh, uh, they are probably the most intelligent of all birds of prey. Okay. Um, no disrespect to other birds of prey, but, um, uh, you know, they, they basically ha are the only social bird of prey. So they live in family groups, whereas in all other birds of prey, the young are actually driven out of the territory oh, at about wow. 18 to 22 weeks of age. Okay. So Sedosa literally is... Uh, a member of a group where it's almost in some ways like humans. The, um, the birds uh, in most cases, you know, will move off when they're three or four years to set up shop, find a mate, et cetera, et cetera. But they stay with the family unit for that long and they hunt as a pack. Wow. So falconers are able to actually utilize that to our benefit and actually uh, fly groups of these birds together. Hmm. So they have the same level of intelligence supposedly as a crow. So. You hear that noise out there? Yeah. See that bird flying up in yeah. at uh, Soren? That's actually a red shoulder. And so red shoulders are one of our beautios. Uh, red-tailed hawk is also beautio. This is what they call a parabutio. Got okay. a little slump over here. So this girl here was a girl that I actually uh, got at 16 weeks of age and yeah. trained her and hunted with her. She was one of my hunting birds. And then she turned out to be not a great hunter, but a very, very good um, school bird. Wow. So, uh, you know, with a, a bird that has the intelligence level of a seven-year-old kid, sometimes they will work you. Wow. So, and you said she's how old now? She is uh, she's 2013, so she's six years old. This wow. is her sixth year. All right. So she actually is, she's been a school bird for almost her entire life. So, um, you know, we could potentially say that she is the most experienced school bird a falconry school bird here in the Midwest. Perfect. The most experienced falconry school bird here in the Midwest. Well, I feel trusted with that. You should. <laughs> you should, especially when we get that rabbit costume on yeah. you. So I'm just saying, you're not getting out of that. All right. So let's step out here, and what we're going to do is throw her up in this tree. Okay. And we'll uh, call her down to your glove. Yeah, you'll notice uh, she has a bunch of favorite perches, so okay. we just let her kind of go where she wants. down by your side. Okay. Good, good, right here. Now, whenever you call a bird of prey to the glove, you yeah. always want to have your left shoulder towards the bird. Okay. Okay, put your glove down because you don't want to raise it too much. Okay. So you're going to turn this way. This gives you a, a slimmer profile, which for me is hard to do, but uh, it gives you a slim profile so that the bird is not necessarily intimidated by okay. you. Okay. And then what happens is, is go ahead and make a fist just like this. Yeah. And then when I, when I tell you to, don't do it yet, but when I tell you to, you're going to raise your glove straight up like this towards me. Okay. So straight out in front of you. Uh, at least shoulder height. And okay. then what we're going to do is we're going to call her down. All right. Okay. You guys ready? All right. Ready? Put your glove straight up and out towards me. <coughs> See, that red shoulder doesn't like her. So sometimes this happens. We have birds that come in and kind of mess with us. Yeah. So for her to fly down right now might necessarily be a little bit of a, uh, a dangerous, a risk, yeah. if you will. But here she comes anyways. Because she wants to come down and show all of your viewers at this week how fun it is to fly to people yeah. here at the Orange School of Falconry. Now you notice those talons? Yeah. Birds of prey have an incredible amount of crushing pressure in their feet, anywhere from 100 to 1,000 pounds. She probably has a couple hundred pounds of crushing pressure in her feet, but is she, she's very gentle, yeah. uh, you know, and so she's uh, a great school bird because of that. We actually just did an event last night uh, with a Boy Scout troop here with about 50 kids, and so she flew to about 50 different uh, wow. kids as young as the age of five. Oh so my gosh. now we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you how to cast her off. And this is the other skill that we're going to have you do here in just a second. Okay. So if you're trying to cast a bird off the glove. Yeah. So, so far you've learned the forward and reverse transfer, getting yeah. the bird on and off the perch. And then you've learned how to call the bird to the glove. So now yeah. we're going to teach you how to cast her off. Okay. You put your arms straight out to the left. Okay. And you square yourself up. And then you step forward and you move your arm forward like that. And the bird goes wherever, wherever it, wants it wants to. to. Exactly. Okay. So come on over here. And we'll do one more call here. Okay. And then I notice we have a little bit of an audience here, so maybe we can get some of the audience members yeah. to come out and uh, call with us. So which shoulder goes towards the bird? Just the like left that. Shoulder. Okay. okay. All right. And then what we're going to do is make your fist okay. and raise your glove straight up and out towards me. She'll eat that just like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, what now, are you calling her with? What, what? Just little pieces of chicken. Oh, wow. So we're All using right. little. We try to make sure that the bird has a varied diet. 
Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to face towards that tree with your arms straight out. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to okay. back the bird onto your glove. Okay. Okay, and then open your glove. We're just going to bring this Jess, which remember we, we, we learned what the Jess was earlier, just like this. Yep. I should pull it right down through here. Okay, make a fist. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have you step oh. forward. Okay. Just step forward and move your arm forward like that and let go. All right. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Nicely. <laughs> Nicely done. Good job. Okay. Now this is the falconer's fist pump. Uh, this is a way that we like to celebrate little uh, uh, little victories like that sure. here at the Ohio School of Falconry. Take your right hand. Yep. Nope, not like that. That'd be a high five. Uh, so what you want to do is just like this, like a bird of prey coming in to grab its food. Yeah. And you finish with a fist pump. Boom. Oh, nice. Just like that. Oh. oh she decided she wanted to sit up there. Yeah. So <laughs> what I need is some of our peanut gallery over here. If you would grab uh, a glove over there. Uh, we're going to have some of the folks that just seem to be walking by here. <laughs> they have no connection to this week magazine at all uh, and the newspapers. Uh -oh. Now see that red shoulder? Yeah. Does not like our bird at all. Okay. Uh, we don't usually have issues with the red shoulders here, but it might be something where they have one of their young in the area and they're oh, still somewhat protective okay. or it's a territorial thing. Okay. So, all right. So why don't we have you come on over here, young man. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I've never met you before, have I? No. Uh, what's your name? Lee. Lee, Lee nice Cochran. to meet Nice to meet you, Lee. Okay. And your young young lady, your I'm name? John. John. John, nice to meet you. I've never met you before either. No. Okay. <laughs> all right. So John, why don't you okay. come on over here? Okay. Well, if you stand back here and get ready, okay. we're going to fly a bird here real quick. Okay. okay, so stand this way. Bird's up here. Yeah. Make a fist just like that. Don't raise it up yet. Yeah, you're right. So just like this. Okay, and when you do, it's going to be flat like this, so it gives me a place to put the tip in. Are you nervous? Uh, not a bit. Well, you should be. I should be. She doesn't, she doesn't like mountaineers. I'll tell you that right now. She's an Ohio State Buckeye through and through. In fact, watch this. Put your glove up. So see, she's a Buckeye. Wow. How was that? That's pretty neat. Isn't it cool? It really is. It's a neat experience. Okay, go ahead and lower your glove and she'll step right up. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cast her back up there. And then this young lady, once you don this glove, okay. come on over here. We're going to have you stand right here. Okay, stand right here. Okay, and your glove down by your side. Okay, now we're going to have you turn this way a little bit more so your left shoulder's there. And what we're going to have you do is make a fist. Now when I tell you to, well, with your left hand, oh. when I tell you to, oh. you're going to raise your glove straight up like this. So look at me just like okay. that. Okay, you ready? Yep. Oh, not that glove, that, the other one. You don't want the bird, okay, oh. so make a fist. Make fist. a fist. So right, right, right here. Okay. Just like that. Oh, just oh. fist. No, no, just make a fist like this oh. with this left hand. Oh. Okay, and raise your glove straight up and out like this. <whistles> Boom, and she gently comes down. Yeah. Now hold your arm up, okay, okay. and smile for the paparazzi hey. over here. <laughs> Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and throw her up and we're going to do one more thing. See how she just steps right up? Mm -hmm. She's a great girl. So we're going to do one more thing. We're going to actually teach you a little bit about what it feels like to be prey. So we call this heads up buzz cut. Okay. So why don't I have you come over and stand right here. All right. Okay. Face the bird. Okay. Just like that. And you come right behind her. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to have you scrunch down a little bit like this. Me? Okay. Yep. Like this. Okay, you stand right behind her. Now you can stand straight up. Stand right behind okay, her over okay, here. Okay. And then you're going to be right behind her. So you can step over here a little bit, just like that. Okay, now put your hand down a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have her fly right over your, her, your head. So don't actually uh, freak out. Don't raise your hand. Don't do anything. because We haven't lost anybody in at least a week. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> How was that? That hit my hat. Yeah, that hit my hat. She's yeah. Well, she once again, she doesn't like the uh, West Virginia. So, uh, anyways, so wow. that gives you a little bit of an experience of what it's like to have a bird uh, chasing you if you yeah. were in a rabbit costume. Well, so if people want to uh, learn more about the falconry classes, sure. How do they do that? So uh, you can go to OhioSchoolOfFalconry.com. Okay. Or OhioFalconry.com. We own both of those sites. They'll both take you to the same place. Okay. Uh, and you can learn about our programs. We teach classes every Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Here at Camp Mary Orton, which is a beautiful uh, 200 acres here in Central Ohio. Yeah. Uh, we partner actually uh, with uh, Zip Zone and with Camp Mary Orton at times to do different programs. Perfect. So we do weddings. We also do Boy Scout, Cub Scout troops. We do wow. nursing homes. Uh, we do team building stuff. So we're the only school in the in the world that uses falconry as a true metaphor for corporate team building. So wow. we actually awesome. have people that come in and uh, corporate teams and we teach the competencies that they're looking for 
uh, around whether it's trust building or team building or that was my big boy day job for 25 yeah. years so oh we my can gosh. do that so, so that we need to do that next right? we'd love we to have you come in <laughs> perfect well thank you guys so so much for joining us and for more hidden gems make sure you uh, leave a comment on where you want us to go next and we'll see you next time thanks for having us did you have fun